Welcome to the Take Action Now Summit. You will discover groundbreaking strategies for personal and business growth with leading experts and innovators. Today, transform forward. Step into 2024 with confidence. Strengthen your network, build relationships, and develop awareness and skills. Join our 21 world-class speakers and experience inspiration, hope for your future, and an elevation of your ambitions. Inspired Choices Network, our summit hosts, are excited to have you here. Let's start off this with a question for you. Are you aware of what you have already created? May sound like an odd question, and I'm sure you're going, well, yes. But are you really aware of everything that you have created? Take a moment now. Just look around the space you're in or think about your home or think about your business and just see it in your imagination. What have you created? Are you aware that absolutely everything in your environment is what you've created? It can be something as simple. Is the glass that's here beside me. Did I actually make the glass? No, but I do know the person who did. But I created having it in my space, in my home, in my office. So when you think about it this way, and you look around and you see things, are you aware, like seriously aware of how that landed there for you? Most of us are not. But what it comes down to is that we are all master creators. Now in that, there's a bit of a caveat there. We are master creators, we create everything and anything. However, most of us are not really paying attention to how we're doing this and the smaller aspects of what's happening for things to appear in our life. We tend to think about creation as being dreams and goals and these wonderful desires that we have that we want to create and bring into our life. And yes, they are all wonderful. No question about it. We also need to be aware of every other little aspect that we've brought into existence. And one of the ways that all of this appears for us is through co-creation. And maybe I shouldn't say one of the ways, maybe it's the way, the way of having things arrive in our life is through this co-creative, this co-creation aspect that's with us 24-7. I'm Karen Leslie, and I am an energetic transformational healer. And when I really got this understanding of how I create how people in general create, and this relationship with co-creation, it changed so much in my life. And today I am excited to share with you this background information maybe for some of you on how this co-creation begins, where it takes you to, and then how to work with it. So we will be going through three daily steps that you can take. And I would so encourage you to use these every day so that you can step into being your master creator from a slightly different perspective of how you may be doing things now. A lot of our co-creation is done really quite unconsciously or on autopilot. And we only focus in and give our attention to a very small portion of what it is we are truly creating. So I would love for that to change for, for everyone and for myself to step more into this as well for who I am and what I wish to be doing and creating in the world as well. So who is this co-creator? Do you have any ideas? Have you figured it out? The universe, or maybe you wanna call it quantum entanglements. Or you may have some other words for this. It could be divine source. Whatever terminology resonates and works for you, that's what I would encourage you to use. I'm going to be referencing the universe just because it's sort of a little bit more global term. But this energy that we cannot see, 
not by the naked eye, really. This energy interconnects everything that's going on around us. And this interconnectedness, these are the pathways that bring what's happening in your world into your physical reality. Now, none of this starts in the physical reality. That may sound odd, but it truly doesn't. This all begins with a simple thought. You know, I can back that up a bit. It begins with an emotion. And then within that emotion, the mind brings forward a thought. And this emotion is really just an energy. It's just that space of all of those quantum entanglements, all those particles moving and connecting and connecting with you. Now, there's a, a very popular statement out there. Um, many people use it actually for encouragement and to give themselves um, maybe even motivation or feel it, it's empowering. And it is the universe always has your back. The universe is always present. We cannot get away from all of these energies around us. Physically impossible. Even when the body decides it's had its time here in the physical realm, the energy does not cease. So yes, the energy is here. Yes, the universe is here. But I'm going to challenge that statement a bit because I have spoken with people and found that when they say the universe, is al universe always has my back, they sometimes get complacent. They sometimes go into, well, it'll be taken care of. I've asked for it, so it will show up. If you don't have everything you would like, if when you look around, you don't see everything you would wish to have in your reality, then somewhere there's a breakdown in that communication. For if the universe brought everything to you, to me, by just having that thought or that ask, wow, think how life would be. <laughs> it might be pretty easy, might be pretty simple, you might be thinking. But that missing step for each and every one of us until we learn to work with it is the power of our thoughts. From my perspective, the universe does not have my back. And I'm not saying that because I'm mad at the universe and it hasn't given me what I want. Quite the contrary. I love all of this quantum entanglements and the energy. And I truly believe in it and the power of it. But I do not believe it has my back. I do not believe it is behind me, which is what that statement implies for my thoughts. From where I stand, my belief, the universe actually follows my lead. We'll often say, well, the universe will just bring it forward. And that gives the impression that the universe is in the leadership role. I believe we are in that leadership role. We are the master creators. We are the one that initiates everything. And depending on how we initiate it, depending on our consistency, depending on our strength of belief, we reinforce our leadership and the universe follows. The universe listens to us all the time. I say this all the time on my show. The universe is always listening. So what are you saying? What are you telling it? You may go to, well, I have my list of goals. I repeat them. I go for them. I say it out loud. Cool. But that's only a small part of the thoughts that you have every day. That's only a fraction of what the universe is truly listening to, reading through the energy connections and responding to. If you were to take the time and really look at your thoughts and really look at your belief systems, you will find that majority of your thoughts, and we have 60,000 to 80,000 of them every single day. 
and the vast majority of them are not supportive. You may even say they're negative or harmful. We are stuck in these loops, these stories, this repetitive way of thinking. And since that's the majority of our day, that's where the universe has its strongest connection to us. And it will bring possibilities for you to choose from, absolutely, but connected into the strongest message you're putting out there. So if it's a message of doubt, if it's a message of imposter syndrome, conflict avoidance, you know, you need to just keep the peace. If you're a people pleaser, you're going to get a lot more people in situations in your life for you to be that people pleaser. But is that what you truly want? Or is that based on these stories and programming that you have had for all of your life? Right? From the age of zero to seven, all of your thoughts and education and ways of thinking about yourself and the world, it's all given to you by the people around you. They are not original thoughts. They are thoughts that are given to you. You hear them often enough and you see them validated in the world around you. So you buy into them and you think, ah, okay, cool. This is the way it is. This is true. When in fact, it may not be true for you. It's likely not even true for the person that gave you that thought. They've just been programmed with it as well. Your only real true awareness of what was going on was when you were initially just born and you popped into this world. At that moment, your only language was energy. And you used that skill set brilliantly to be able to stay alive, to survive, to communicate with those who you were in the care of so that your body could continue. Then that's drilled out of us. You're taught as you get older, use your words, use your words. And that energy starts to, it never goes away, but it, it starts to drift into the back thoughts of our minds. And we don't use it the same way. So what I would like to do is help you reestablish this and build that connection back so that when you step into being that master creator that you are with your co-creator, the universe, you can expand it out and receive more and be more in command, really, truly in command of what you would like to come into your reality. Right? As I said at the beginning, if you've got things around you that you're not sure really how they got there or you're not really wanting them to be part of your life, it was you that brought them in. So guess what? It's you that can change them. If we created it, we can change that creation. It just needs a little bit of awareness on your part and some action steps that you need to take to change this programming and to reinforce in a new way of thinking how you wish to be creating for yourself. There's a number of ways of doing this. For me personally, I'll share with you like the, the, the three ways that I love to reconnect and to change how I am creating in my life, right? Changing those thoughts and beliefs and um, programs that are within me that aren't helpful takes a little bit of an effort, sure. For most people, and I say never say never, but for most people, it doesn't happen instantly. I personally have experienced some things where there's been such a, an immediate awareness and change when I work with the energy, that it's so reinforcing for me to keep going and to move. And that's a gift that the universe has given me. And being in allowance to see all that is around you and how you're responding and how you're thinking is a gift, but it's only a gift that you can give to yourself. The universe sends so much to you every single moment, but it's our beliefs and our brain, the way the brain works, that it filters things out and it only allows us to really see certain things that match our belief systems and how we feel about ourself and the world around us. So let's move into, I really don't want to run out of time here. So let's move into these three steps 
that um, I feel are so beneficial. The first one, start your day, and it only takes moments, but start your day with reconnecting to your body. Your body is brilliant. It is all made of energy. That's all it is. Every space, every organ, every particle, every space between spaces, it's energy. And as a result, it is 24-7 connected to the energy around you, i.e. your co-creator, the universe. But when we get into trouble, when we get struggles or we have some anxiety or whatever it might be, we disconnect from the body and we've been taught to go into the mind and to figure it out with logic. Well, to be perfectly honest, if that was going to work, none of us would have any difficulties in this moment at all. But we all do. And that's because that technique is really flawed. Your mind is not designed to work that way. Your mind is designed to reinforce the beliefs you have. End of story. But yet, we want to create something new. So we need to create a new story, a new belief, a new way of thinking. And it starts with connecting with your body. A really simple technique that I use is just taking a deep breath in. And try it with me if you like. But take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, both see in your imagination the number three and think the word three as you exhale. So you breathe in. As you exhale, you see a three and you say three. Just pause for a slight moment at the end of your exhale. And then repeat that again. Inhale. See that number three. Think the word three as you're exhaling. Pause. One more time. Inhale. See that number three. Think the number or the word three. And pause. And just be in that space. This number three, when we work with it, it is a relaxation technique for physical relaxation. When you go into number two and number one, you go into mental and you go into the theta realm for meditation. But I just want you to have the number three right now because it's the physical relaxation I want you to feel. Now be aware of the senses in your body. Just take that moment. You can even say the number three again if you want. It will bring you deeper in. You can say three again if you like. And as you're there, drop into your body, feel whatever is present. Some people may feel tingles. Some of you might feel a heaviness. Some of you may get a sense of a color in your body. It's all perfect. It's all correct for you. Now, in this calmer space, bring to mind what you desire to have, what you desire to create. Think of one thing, bring one thing forward. And when it comes forward, allow yourself to feel the emotion that comes with it, whatever that might be a positive emotion, excitement. Perhaps you start to smile. Maybe you get some tingling. Maybe there's a, a sense of joy or, or giggles that come with this. Allow that to come forward. Be with it. And let the universe sense and connect to that energy in your body. If you want, ask for it to be exponentialized. Ask for it to, excuse me, ask for it to grow. and give yourself permission to send it out to the universe for the universe to receive. Don't hold it in. Don't protect it, don't hide it. Now from this space, 
you've got what you want, you have that desire, you've got that emotion, it's feeling real and your mind is going, oh, cool, this is what Karen would like. Now, I always have a pen and paper nearby. The next step is to write down two or three actions that you will take to support this desire. Actions you will take in that same calendar day. Write them down. Obviously, we're not doing this right now, but when you go back and listen, write them down. Make them actionable. Make them things that you can actually do. Now, some, you may write down one or two things that are a little bit of a stretch, and that's okay. But don't write something down that you know is absolutely impossible, that you have no skill set for. If something like that comes to mind, then write down that you need to learn about so that you can do that at a, another day. And with each one that you write down, be in that space of emotion, be in that space of heartfelt gratitude that you get to do this, that you have this opportunity to co-create, to bring this into your reality and allow the other emotions to come forward with it. But gratitude is always important. The third step. Let the thought patterns flow. So this is where you might get your yeah buts or I don't know if I can do that. I don't think I believe in myself to be able to do what I wrote down. Allow these things to come forward so that you get a really clear understanding of now of what has been in your way to create what you would like to have in your life. These yeah buts, look at them, write them down, and then look and see what's underneath that that's holding that in place. Your mind's going to love it. It's going to give you lots of evidence as to why you can't do it. Pay attention to it, not from the perspective of buying into it as being real and true. Pay attention to this so that you can look at it with honesty and vulnerability to let it go, to see where you need to stop this way of thinking. Now, how to do that? That can be a whole large body of work. A short and quick way for you to start to work with this now, as of today, is using the word stop. That's it. Stop and see it and hear it and say it as if it's all in capital letters. So you've got this thought, Wow, I really don't think I could make that phone call. Stop. Pause. And recognize that this is a program or a story that you've bought into that's not real and true. Ask yourself a question. A question helps to shift energies really, really well. What can I do? to make this easier for myself? Is there someone I can talk to today that can help me with getting on this call or whatever it might be for you? But when you have those repetitive thoughts come back and you know it's not supportive and you are open and willing to no longer hiding behind it, stop. And you can follow it up with, that's not me anymore. Or stop, that is not true for me. Yep, yeah, absolutely that was true for my dad. Or absolutely that was true for my boss. But that is not me. When you say that, you will have a wonderful shift in results. So there's our three steps. Thank you for Action Now Summit. Inspired Choices Network and our expert speakers are excited to connect with you and learn about your desires to evolve and grow in 2024. If you'd like to learn more about everything Inspired Choices Network offers, including future summits, 
please email us at info at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com.